lived in really tin shanty uh, poverty. Peddling anything he could find to put food in his family's bellies, it became apparent to Pacquiao the only way to free his family from this place would be with his fists. Whatever success that I accomplish and how much money I earn, I will never forget that feeling. holiday spirit, giving away turkeys and pumpkin pies to needy families. I still understand, I still feel the, the hearts of the poor people. I always said, you never know when the next Muhammad Ali is going to walk to your door. Limited copies of Manny Pacquiao's stamps have gone on sale in the country. I knew this was, I knew he was special. And Manny Pacquiao really fighting like a true champion. Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. A rags to riches story for the ages. When you were younger, explain why you w ran away from home. At age 14, after his father killed and ate his dog, Manny left home. I decided to go uh, to Manila to uh, continue my boxing career and to help my family. He would find his way to Manila to train in a rundown gym. His ability caught the owner's eye. He permitted Manny to sleep inside the gym. He actually slept inside the ring. He slept wherever he could, sometimes in the gym, sometimes in the street, but always dreaming of becoming a professional boxer. At age 16, a starving street kid named Manny Pacquiao made his pro debut. He had to lie about his age to compete. He also fought seven pounds under the weight. You weighed 98 and the minimum was 105. Yes. You put yes. heavy things in your pocket. Just to, to make the 105. Pacquiao. Now remember, Manny Pacquiao still undefeated with a record of four wins and no loss. But do you realize he turned pro as a 16-year-old pro? Not even five feet tall, not even 100 pounds. It looks like he wants to throw those power bombs. Manny's electrifying style endeared him to local fighting fans and delivered one fantastic confrontation after another. More! More! I never thought he'd get anywhere as a fighter. He was wild. He threw punches from all directions, no signs whatsoever. But he had power and he had guts, he had courage. He made roughly $20 for the fight. I think it's going to be a short night, as far as this fight is concerned. Well, Pacquiao hopes so. Relentless pressure. A hallmark of the Pacquiao brand. Baby, he is a fast punching machine. Uh, he should go non-stop now. That's his style. Yes, that's it. He developed a reputation as someone who could end a fight at any moment with a single punch. This stupid, oh, see? unbeaten in 10 fights pretty impressive young fighter at age 17 accompanied by an actual regular diet of nutritious food Manny's body began to mature he failed to make the flyweight of 105 It was a tough reminder that while he was talented, he was still just a kid. Well, he's a very popular fighter. Yeah. All, all, everywhere we go, they, they ask for Manny Pacquiao. But he's young, he's, he's colorful. Pacquiao's non-stop assault of combination jabs, hooks, and uppercuts 
would become his signature style. He's being overwhelmed by Manny Pacquiao. Again, with a right-left combination. And Manny Pacquiao touching at will. Ooh. This is a big victory for Manny Pacquiao. His first win over a foreign opponent. With 23 wins, the Pac-Man would contend for his first internationally recognized belt. At 33-0, he was an undefeated powerhouse. Most fans at the time felt Manny was being moved up too quickly. SWBC flyweight title on the line, the title of Chuchai Shashiko, Manny Pacquiao. At this stage, a loss could have meant a return to poverty and obscurity. But when you fight for a cause greater than yourself, to break free from a ruthless cycle of poverty, how much you can take is not quantifiable. And down he goes when there was a cracking body shot in amongst the barrage of blows. Manny Pacquiao has come of age in Thailand. He is a world champion. At age 18, the Pac-Man was a world champion. Won the lineal championship of the world and then skipped up a couple weight classes. Shashakul, his reign is over. The Pac-Man's has just begun. Because in his early years, he was fighting to earn a living, to improve the quality of life of his family. A new champion had risen. He was now a national hero. The people cheered his triumphant return to the Philippines, and Pacquiao began to see just how great the effect he could have. The WBC flyweight champion, Manny Pacquiao. See, it's not a matter of just punching. A lot of guys throw punches, but they don't always have the same kind of results that a guy like Pacquiao had. He knew when to punch. out having three meals a day and a solid sleep and training schedule did wonders for the former street kid unfortunately this worked against him as he was no longer able to maintain the 112 pound limit he forced himself into extreme dehydration in order to defend his belt he was knocked out it was another lesson learned for the 18 year old kid after the defeat, Manny moved into a more natural weight of 122. He immediately fought for another title belt against a fighter who had never been knocked down in his career. The time had come for Manny to take the next step. He packed his bags and headed for America. Despite being a champion in Asia, Pacquiao couldn't find a promoter who would work with him until he met Freddie Roach. Well, I, they walked in my gym about 12 years ago, him and Mr. Nazario, his manager at the time. And uh, he asked me to work the mitts with him. And uh, after one round of the mitts, I walked over to my people and said, wow, this kid can fight. Roach had trained over 25 <laughs> world champion fighters. Uh, and you know, that first round really told me something. I've seen guys fast before, uh, and I've seen guys with power before, but never some that had both. It wasn't long before Pacquiao would get his chance. The super bantamweight champion was scheduled to defend his title, but his opponent dropped out on just two weeks' notice. 
Pacquiao agreed to fight the bigger, stronger, and much more known champion. All right, upcoming, Leshinolo Ledwaba will be taking on Manny Pacquiao. And for more on that, let's go back downstairs to Jim Lampley. Jim? For Leshinolo Ledwaba against Manny Pacquiao, uh, Pacquiao. I'll get it right. Pacquiao. Was a late-minute replacement against Lelo Ledwaba, who was considered a guy on the rise on pound-for-pound -pound list, top 10 type, maybe a heavy favorite. Now yeah. the opponent is a real pro for the IBM Super Bantamweight Championship of the World. Pacquiao. Pacquiao. Say Pacquiao. Say Pacquiao. Pacquiao. Yeah. Should fight here. He shouldn't try to get into a boxing match with this master boxer. I think this guy just hit so hard. I had never seen him. I frankly had never heard of him. But I've seen and heard of him now. for the very impressive Manny Pacquiao, who takes a good fighter and just takes him apart. Pacquiao established himself as a crowd-pleasing crowd entry into the featherweight division. And now, a two-time world champion, he is now the reigning IBF Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Manny Pacquiao. The victory put Manny on the map. He had become much more than just a celebrity. For Pacquiao, he's the king of the Philippines. He's a, he's a god over there. Parades, politicians, everyone wanted to see the kid who had fought himself from one of the poorest places on earth to the top of the world. He's an icon, he's a legend. He's inspiration to many, many people over there. So when you're the king of the hill, not to allow that to take your fire away. And that's difficult to do, especially when you're the king of a country. Back in the Philippines, he is a star of astounding proportions. Up there with an Ali, a Chavez in their countries. Who sent many top fighters into the ring. Box! I think Pacquiao has already gotten some of Julio's respect for his power. Oh, big left hand by Pacquiao. Julio seems a little bit flustered by Manny's power. That is the look of a guy who knows he's made a big mistake. This is some prospect, Bobby. Two, to me, he's three, every bit as exciting as Prince four, Nassim Hamed. And Bill Clancy's seen it up. Pacquiao destroyed him in such a way, we wondered, what could he do against Marco Antonio Barrera? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Barrera may be a little long in the tooth, but he's still one of the best ever. Manny stacked on weight to move up into the featherweight division to face his greatest test yet. Three-time world champion, Marco Antonio Barrera. Barrera was uh, considered one of the very best fighters in the world. Manny was something of an upstart, uh, just starting to rise. And uh, the expectation was that Barrera would be just too much for him. They said the jump up and wait would be too much, that Barrera was just too big. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her ready to rumble! Barrera opened as a four to one favorite. It's the kind of fight that I'll never forget watching. Hard left hand. to Barrera was scary, the way he dominated Barrera. It would become a defining moment. He's gonna step into the ring. That's a good decision. Finally, they could have done that two rounds. The Filipino star Manny Pacquiao annihilates, destroys, and embarrasses the great Marco Antonio Barrera. Pacquiao's gonna be looking hard for people who wanna face that kind of devastation. He was now a three-time world champion in three different weight classes. He is an international superstar, but in the Philippines, I think his impact is as great as any athlete in terms of one singular country. Called the Asian Elvis, 
Manny was a star of movies, TV shows, endorsements. That guy's a hell of a cool player. Is he? Like world class. Where Manny went, scores of fans followed. That he is the Beatles, Michael Jordan, and Brad Pitt wrapped him to one. As incredible as this rivalry would become, the first round was anything but competitive. He's a special combination of speed, power, and Juan Manuel Marquez has been down twice. And tenaciousness, mental toughness. Third knockdown of the first round. And I'm not sure Juan Manuel will be able to get up. Any knockout is a storm. Juan Manuel Marquez hasn't ever seen anything like that. Who has? But Marquez settled in after the early assault, and a rivalry for the ages would be born. Marquez is making the stand of his life. Fight was declared a draw. Split. The bout is a draw. Both fighters keep their respective titles. But always at the heart of Manny Pacquiao is the spirit of giving back. It's estimated Pacquiao has earned over $500 million from boxing, of which Manny has donated more than 300 million back to his community. Is they bring their medical bills to his house and they kind of leave them in. He pays. He helps everyone, gives them money. He pays for the health care of strangers. In 2011, Typhoon Washi killed more than a thousand and left many more homeless. In addition to giving many weeks of his time and donating more than $500,000, Manny would go on to construct over 1,000 homes for the victims, out of pocket. It is time for our main event, Eric Morales against Manny Pacquiao. That people are up all night in the Philippines to watch their national hero. The fight lived up to the hype. Hard left hand by Pacquiao. Morales with a hard right hand coming back. A headbutt opened a cut over Manny's eyes. Bam, that's a headbutt that probably caught the blood. Absolutely. Doctor is going to have to look at Pacquiao. But the fight was allowed to continue. They went back and forth, both landing vicious shots on the other. Fighters left it all in the ring, standing toe to toe until the final bell. What a fight! Nobody is going to ask for their money back. <laughs> to the winner by unanimous decision. Morales was the more accurate puncher and won the unanimous decision. And after he lost Morales, uh, I told myself it's my job to make his right hand as good as his left. With more time to work with Pacquiao, Freddie Roach began the process of turning the one-punch, one-style Pacquiao into a well-rounded warrior, capable of using both hands with equal destructiveness. Their relationship was rooted in much more than just boxing, as Manny would look to Roach as a father figure. He's not my only my trainer. He's He's also uh, my advisor and my 
like my father. His mitt sessions are a thing of legend, as his power has a tendency to damage his trainer's hands. He is known for his relentless pressure, which is born of seemingly endless reserves of endurance. These reserves are not given, but earned. And he jumps rope for over an hour straight each workout. When he runs, he is followed like Rocky Balboa down the streets. Lockout trained by the veteran Freddie Roach, former protege of the great Eddie Futch, regarded by some as one of the very greatest of all modern trainers. Oh, and Manning waiting to get out of the gates. Yeah, he'll come running right across, folks. Fireworks from that one. Well, Schedule for 12. He'll run into a great fighter right across the ring from him. Morales was looking to make a statement against Manny. His early strategy was to attack, followed by more attacking. Well, well, Morales. Straight punches for Morales. Woo. But Pacquiao was a hungry brawler, and aggression was just his game. This is Pacquiao's time to fight. The war was on. After an incredible exchange where both fighters absorbed the other's best shots. One of the great talents of our time, Eric Morales. And Manny Pacquiao, one of the most exciting boxers of any time. Manny finally broke through. twice in the 10th round to be the KO winner. The winner by TKO victory, Manny Pacman Pacquiao. The fight was everything it was expected to be, and an exciting conclusion to the Morales Pacquiao trilogy was in high demand. Manny would leave little doubt about who the better fighter was. And down he goes! Solid left hand shot by He had knocked out the great Morales. Not once, but twice. When Manny fights, the nation stops and watches. He's an obsession. Everybody watches every fight. Local businesses receive huge financial boosts. Well, it's hard to believe, but only one man can empty the city streets, and that's Manny Pacquiao. Famously, crime drops to near zero during Pac-Man fights. By the estimation of both Ring Magazine and ESPN.com, these are two of the top five fighters in the world. Is it round 13 of the first fight? The second battle against Marquez was much like the first. An all-time back and forth.
Oscar De La Hoya had been the biggest earner of his generation. Pacquiao jumped up two weight classes to fight Oscar De La Hoya, who was a natural welterweight. And at the time, most people did laugh. They thought, this is not a mismatch in favor of you. It's a mismatch in favor of Oscar De La Hoya. Again, no one believed Pacquiao would win. It was even a bill introduced in the Philippine legislature. Boom, perfect timing. To prevent Manny from leaving the country to participate in the fight because he would be annihilated. De La Hoya was the bigger man. So unusual that you simply couldn't have imagined it would happen. He was such a, such a handsome guy, and you turned his face into a nightmare. After destroying another Mexican fighter in the ring, Manny earned a new nickname, the Mexicutioner. No one had been able to go up in size and maintain their power like Manny. No one. Manny became the first man in boxing history to claim lineal championships in four divisions. The greatest boxer on the planet wasn't enough for Pacquiao. He was elected to Congress in the Philippines. Could this political appointment become a distraction? Well, you know what? According to his trainer and a guy who should know Freddie Roach, it already has been. Antonio Margarito had been busted using illegal hand wraps, dipped in plaster of Paris before a fight against Shane Mosley. The plaster hardens upon contact with moisture forming a cement-like barrier around the hand. Mm. Margarito walked into the ring today at 165 pounds, se 17 pounds heavier than Manny Pacquiao. He's a much bigger guy than anybody Pacquiao has ever fought for. Margarito was disgraced. He'd beaten great fighters using concrete hands. He was a cheater. So it's okay to feel joy when watching what you are about to see. You know about the giant screen overhead here in Cowboys Stadium. The picture appeared, you heard the roar. And Emmanuel Stewart, it's inevitable. And the millions around the world who wish they could be here. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble. A much bigger opponent, his biggest opponent ever. What, what, what did it show you tonight? Maxim Pacquiao hits a blunt with a big left hand and then flurries and backs Margarito off again. I, I didn't have him losing a single round. <laughs> All Manny Pacquiao, the worldwide phenomena, continues. Harold Letterman is still given every round in the fight so far to Manny Pacquiao. And obviously the fight's not over, but. How good is he, Emmanuel? I, I think he's one of the best fighters I've ever saw. And he's what we call a natural. The power, the explosiveness. He was a once-in-a-lifetime fighter. A vicious beatdown of a guy who outweighed 17 pounds in the ring. Victory. Margarito has a vicious beatdown to remember. His fifth consecutive conquest of a significantly bigger man. He was now an eight division champion. Eight belts in eight weight classes. Unparalleled. Unmatched. Unequivocally the greatest. Are we going to see another virtuoso masterclass from Manny Pacquiao? I was looking at Manny, and the guy is like to my chin almost, maybe a little bit taller than my chin. I'm like, there's no way this guy can beat me. <laughs> no way. There are more Filipino fans, I think, than American fans for Sugar Shane Mosley. Action underway. Two touch gloves. I fall down, I'm like, wow, that didn't, that, didn't, that didn't seem that hard. Why, why did I go down? 
I get back up and I'm dizzy. I'm like, whoa, I'm still dizzy. Like, I've never been hit back casually, it seemed like to me. I have 10 more rounds to go. And one big final payday for Shane Mosley and a victory for Manny Pacquiao. And still the WBO welterweight champion of the world, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao! Manny would face Juan Manuel Marquez for the fourth time. Marquez was a legend in his own right. And his final battle with the Pac-Man meant the world for his legacy. He was hungry. Meanwhile, Manny was becoming increasingly occupied with his political career and charitable works. We're not preparing as the way we should for this fight. Have you said this to Manny? Of course. I said you that. told Manny that he could lose the fight? If he keeps on the road he's going, yes. We become civilized because you don't have that same mindset. You don't have that same conviction. It's, I call it tunnel vision. You got to have tunnel vision. It was a lot like Rocky Three. You can't wear two hats in boxing. That's a whole different concept. And of course, since he has held political office in the Philippines, he has adapted his lifestyle to that of responsible public representation. Or like Rocky said, slicing. The eye of the tiger. Right. You got to head back to win. Clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck. Touch them up. Goodness, what they? They've had three very good fights. Is this too much of a good thing, or is too much of a good thing a good thing? The loss was devastating. Commentators wondered why he would continue on. His skill and his determination and his toughness was never in question, but all of a sudden now, he's being knocked out by Marquez, and, and, and the, the durability is in question for the first time that I can remember. Manny would share this message with those people. When you fight for something more than yourself, something deeper than glory, age can become no more than a number. He was back. He's back. He's back. No doubt about it. He cruised to unanimous decision over Brandon Rios and Chris Algieri. The fighting pride of the Philippines, Manny. But even if you retire with a perfect record, if you don't fight Pacquiao, then you know, people will say he what, didn't what, take on the other best. What, Whether you're one and he's one A or the other way around, they need to fight each other. The enormity of this event has no doubt been amplified by the fact that it's the first true fight of the century type showdown of the social media age. After years of back and forth, Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao were finally set to fight. The fight drew a record live gate of $72 million and a record of 4.7 million pay-per-view buys. It can be argued that this one thus far has been defined by the balance sheet. Let's take a look at some of the projections for a fight that reportedly could generate as much as $400 million in revenue. That that would surpass the GDPs of 29 different countries. And the millions watching around the world. Whoa, perfect timing. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. The two premier boxers of their generation going head to head 
in the fight that so many said would never happen. Here it is at last, it is happening. 16,000 people here in the arena, millions watching around the world, and the biggest fight of the century is on. Not always been a quick start. Hard right hand again by Maywood. He's landed two clean right hand shots in the first round. Mayweather comfortably ahead. I think he's won most of the rounds. That's why what you just saw. But instead, it's Mayweather has just turned this into a clinic. Pacquiao bravely going on till the end. But that is it. The richest fight in the sport history is over. And still undefeated. Like all athletes, boxers tend to be reluctant to stop. It is my time. This is one time. And still champion by tomorrow night. Manny Pacquiao ain't doing nothing to me, baby. Keith Durbin talking about you're going to crucify him and stuff yeah. like that. And he just Ooh, like, don't say that. I mean, I know he likes to quote Bible verses, so I'll let you know he's getting crucified. And he said certain things like, I'm going to send Manny Pacquiao to retirement. I'm going to knock Manny Pacquiao out. I'm going to crucify Manny Pacquiao. Oh, his family felt it. Oh, when I said I'm going to crucify the man, who they said, who? Ah, it's almost as if they had a crown of thorns on them themselves. They felt it. Please welcome the longest current reigning welterweight champion, the hard-hitting, acclaimed, and undefeated WBA welterweight champion of the world, introducing Keith One Time Thurman. Thurman vowed to retire the Pac-Man to destroy his legacy. Nowhere is the anticipation for the big fight higher than Pacquiao's own hometown and home country of the Philippines. It didn't take long for Manny to remind Thurman who he was. Oh, that was Thurman! And let me tell you, that was just a quick punch. I would love to be the man that destroys Manny Pacquiao. His legacy is often compared to the greatest, Muhammad Ali. And here we see the Ali shuffle. Both men used their incredible gifts to build up and give hope to those who felt hopeless. For them, every time Manny steps into the ring, it means more roads, hospitals, parks, schools. A professional career that began in January of 1995.
of when Keith Thurman was six years Even old. In his 24th year as a professional, he's 40 years old. What did we witness tonight again against the guy who was previously undefeated? In the literal fight of his life, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao is undefeated. While it was his iron will that made him famous, it is his heart that makes him a legend. Good right uppercut by Manny. Oh, and a great right hand by Thurman. Time winding down here in round seven. See what Pacquiao's doing right now is giving him different angles. Seeing him beat Keith Thurman at 40 years old, like, damn, this guy's great. Pacquiao defeated Thurman to become the oldest welterweight champion in boxing history. In favor of the winner, boxing's pride of the Philippines, the ageless wonder, the one and only current WBA welterweight champion of the world. Okay, do you think one day you might be president? It's hard to, to have a comment right now because it's that far away.